I'm going to show you a spectacular game played by one of my students in the Chess Punks tournament held last Sunday on chess.com in collaboration with Chessable. In fact, my Chessable courses are on sale at the moment for I think just another 24 hours. So do check out chessable.com. I'll put the link somewhere down there. Um, yeah, if you're interested in a repertoire for black with the anti-Sicilians or uh, with the Sicilian Kalashnikov, um, what else? There are how good is your chess courses? You can gauge how well you're doing. Do check out those courses. So, who are the chess punks? Well, chess punks is uh, a community of adult chess improvers that was founded on Twitter in September 2018. And the catchy hashtag chess punks was coined by Neil Bruce, one of the co founders of the community. Big shout out to Neil. And he, he was one of the instigators of this tournament on chess.com. So there were qualifying competitions online uh, four in four rating sections, under 1,300, under 1,700, under 2,000, and then an open section, which was basically over um, 2,200. And yeah, those qualifying tournaments ended up in a, a knockout rapid tournament of 32 players divided into those four sections. Professional coaches were assigned four players each to uh, train up before the tournament. I, I was one of those uh, coaches and I had a great time preparing my quartet of players for the event. So I'd like to take you through a game played by one of my students in the under 1300 section. So playing black here is Lekan Oladipupo from Lagos, Nigeria. He hasn't a huge amount of experience. He's um, 18 years old. Play is quite patchy. His openings are mixed, uh, but he has tremendous tactical ability. Uh, so he's you know something of a rough diamond. Um, he's currently studying very hard at a college on a computer science course. So you know he doesn't have a huge amount of time to spare for chess, but you know loves playing. But he showed incredible commitment during our lessons. And, you know, we'd be cramming in sessions around his college work. So sometimes there'd be he'd be at home. Sometimes he'd still be at college and you know, we'd be having a session. Once we even held the session when he was on the bus on his morning commute in Lagos, um, which was incredible. So he did really, really well. And yeah, he came through one of the online qualifying tournaments and showed some exceptional ideas in his play. So let's take a look at this. So he's black against Mark Manacharian from Armenia. And Mark had already won the first game. So uh, Lekan had to win this one to go through to a tie break. A Sicilian. And now Mark plays this quite unusual idea of breaking but taking with the queen in the middle even though it, it's attacked but it drops back to d2 so this has come to the fore in the last sort of I don't know four or five years I mean no one had seen this a few years ago <laughs> the idea is that white wants to fianchetto the queen's bishop as we're seeing here and then whoops that was not the move played and then castle queenside as quickly as possible so it's very different I mean this is a very different setup to, to how you normally see in the Sicilian and I suppose the normal move here is, is bishop e7 and to get castle but Lekan played d5 he broke straight away in the center which is okay but you've got to watch out for that pawn bishop e6 is best here as Kramnik has once played no less but Lekan played d4, and this is a bit dubious. This this pawn is under fire. I mean, this knight could just go to b5, and then it's hard to see how black can save that pawn. But white played bishop b5. Also very interesting. Rapid development, so I like that. So obviously pawn takes knight allows queen takes queen mate. 
and this is still good for white. Bishop d7, yeah, brings the piece out. The knight drops back. This pawn is the problem. But now Lekan develops quickly. Bishop b4. So at least he can get castled as quickly as possible. And white should play queen g5 here. And I think, you know, white is going to win a pawn. But it's not so clear. But c3, definitely a mistake. And here is where Lekan starts the fight back. So an exchange of pawns, and then bishop a3 check. Probably that bishop should should just come back to b2, but king b1. And then bishop f5 check. Well, black's pieces now coming out rapidly, and those bishops look very dangerous indeed. And castles. Yes, good to see Black's king tucked away very safely in the corner. That's good. And then Black can concentrate on attacking on other parts of the board. So um, Mark exchanged queens. Understandable because his king is perhaps a little bit vulnerable. Knight f3. Yep, white needs to develop. And an excellent move from Lakan. Knight b4. He goes straight onto the attack. Threatening a check here. So knight ed4 defends the c2 square. Attacking the bishop as well. So gains a little bit of time for development. Good idea. Bishop e4. And rook e1. So white has developed pretty well, but the king a little bit insecure. So a6. Lekan thought for about a minute over that move. I should mention the time control is, is rapid. So 15 minutes, and I think it's 15 minutes, uh, they got five seconds increment as well. So a6 pushes the bishop back, looks good. Now, here's your first point to have a think. How do you play with black in this position? Black to play. You know, black has very nice pieces, but you need to do something with them. Um, certainly in terms of structure, then there is just nothing wrong with white's position at all. You know, it's very even. So it's all going to be about piece play in this position. So what can you play as black? How can you try and increase the pressure? That's your challenge. I shall have a quick cup of tea. Now, black to play. Rook c8. That's a really nice move. So again, Lekan invested a little bit of time there, 40 seconds over that move. Good move because that bishop is unsupported. There is no pawn protecting it. And it's not easy to protect. Obviously, the c1 square is covered by the bishop, so that just feels like a really nice move. And we would very much like white to exchange off bishop for knight because then black would be threatening bishop c3 checkmate you see you've got to love your bishops you've got to love your bishops rook c8 played hitting the bishop which understandably dropped back to b2 now what does Lekan want to do now well he came up with a fantastic move I'll have another drink you have another thing black to play Well, I must admit, my first thought here, when I was commentating um, on the game live, and I just thought, oh, well, you know, give a check here. We exchange some pieces. The rook slams down on the second rank or the seventh rank. Rook takes pawn. What's not to like? Rook on the seventh. Pawn up. Good pieces. Well, that's simple. But Lakan did not go for that simplistic idea in the position. He instead went for rook c2. He thought for a, over a minute and a half and found rook c2. Fantastic idea. So 
first of all, let's see what happens if white starts taking things. So what about bishop takes bishop? Well, that one's easy. Rook takes pawn mate. Okay, what about taking the rook? In this case, knight takes check. And now a huge discovered attack. Knight takes rook, check, and black wins, uh, wins a, basically ends up a piece up. What else we got? Well, what about rook takes? No, no good to check here. Now, this is very nice. Knight takes rook. And if white takes here, as well, there's lots of chopping here. Check. And you take that rook, so winning material advantage for black. So white is under massive pressure here. Simple threat to take the bishop. So white played rook b1. Now, what would you do here? I mean, there's quite a few good moves, I think. But Lakan came up with a really, really nice move. He simply maintained all the pressure. He thought for almost three minutes. Came up with rook fc8. Good move. And now there's a clear threat. For example, okay, random move for white. Let me show you the threat. If knight g5, then you could exchange and play rook c1 check. Oh, that's painful. Remember, the bishop covers b1. And that's why Mark came up with knight e2 to cover the c1 square. So he's scrambling. He's doing his best to defend. Now, what happens next? Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes. Now, Lakan kind of hesitates for a moment here. He played rook e8. So he's sort of pinning, trying to trying to keep white really bottled up. And, and it's true, there's very little that white can do here. He had something a little bit more decisive, but he found it on the next turn anyway. I mean, this bishop still can't be taken because rook takes pawn his mate. f4, played by white. I mean, there really isn't much else. And now Lakan found the way to go. He exchanged everything on b2 and then ended up with a beautiful fork on d3. I think we can count that as, as a, a good old octopus. There we are. Knight d3 check and knight takes rook. So now black is a whole rook up. And it didn't take too much more for the game to end. Knight d2, that knight still being an absolute beast in the position. So that one, another piece. So here, Mark resigned. What a wonderful game. I mean, I'm so impressed by Lakan's tactical ability there. First of all, that move rook c8, really like that. And then the star move rook c2. And here's the really cool bit. He didn't cash in, but just played rook c8, maintaining all the pressure. Brilliant game. So that victory leveled the scores, so they went into a tie break. Actually, Lakan was doing really well, but he had connection problems, and I'm afraid he ended up losing on time. A really sad end for him, but I think he showed some great chess. Um, yeah, in fact... I want to say a big well done to uh, all four of my students, my quartet, Rebecca, Neil, Mike and Lakan, who did really, really well, played, played some great chess in there. Um, if you want to check out the Chess Punks community on Twitter and benefit from all the kind of tips and tricks and advice and, uh, you know, the, there are puzzles, uh, do go to Twitter, hashtag chess punks and you'll find a really thriving community there uh, a really positive community for chess improvers they call it adult chess improvers it basically it's they're excluding the kids um so do check that out 
hashtag chesspunks on Twitter or X as we should say these days. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you're inspired by Lacan's performance. <laughs>